uh, today and tomorrow. What are you hearing about the oil well fires that have been set by Saddam Hussein's forces? We've been hearing a lot. Uh, we've been hearing uh, that uh, he is systematically setting them on fire. Actually, we had uh, information much earlier, uh, about two or three months ago, that he mined all the oil fields in Kuwait, waiting for this desperate minute and last move. So here it is. He started uh, setting them on fire. But unfortunately, they kept lying to the world that it is the uh, doing of the uh, Allied forces. But well, we just heard uh, a gentleman, a respected scholar in Jordan, say, uh, actually he suggested, he didn't outright say, that a lot of this is just propaganda, this talk of Saddam setting oil wells afire and arresting people and executing people. Address yourself to that, please. Well, I understand exactly what he's saying because I've been in Jordan last month, and uh, I am a Kuwaiti. I have been in Kuwait when the Iraqi troops invaded. I'm proud to be an Arab. I'm proud to be a Muslim. I'm proud to be a Kuwaiti. I'm, my response to uh, this colleague in Jordan, that he is ignorant, he's deceiving himself, just like the Iraqi leader and the Iraqi Ba'ath regime is deceiving their people. We're seeing them being bounded, their planes being destroyed, and they are claiming hundreds of planes of the Allies are being shut down. This is every, uh, the whole world is seeing it. Unfortunately, they don't want to be, uh, to see facts and uh, of life. What is happening? What is happening exactly is an aggression upon peaceful country, a reign of terror that's been going on for six months, being uh, escalated the last two weeks. People were sh uh, rounded up from the streets. Just last night, we heard the news from Kuwait that they were taking people, anyone in the street, any Kuwait in the street, they are picking them up. Uh, just two days ago, they rounded people after a Friday prayer. They are coming out of the ceremony, they rounded them up in buses and trucks. So uh, my response to him, that I did get in my hand, I have a proof of it also, report from Jordan itself. Some of Palestinian friends of mine, whom I have taught in Kuwait University, they worked in the oil industry in Kuwait. They gave me reports about details, report about the mining of the oil in the fields. We have it, and I have sent it to my government when I came back from Jordan. So it isn't propaganda, it's fact. I know it is for sure, it's fact, and I have been these uh, people when they came over to my country, rampaging. Thank you very much for being with us. We hope you will be back in your country and home again soon. Thank Thanks you very so much for being with us. As the ground war offensive rumbles, here are headlines of the hour. President Bush declares the war to liberate Kuwait has, quote, entered a final phase. U.S. and Allied ground forces are reported advancing into occupied Kuwait and maneuvering in southern Iraq. Baghdad remains officially silent. A single Scud missile has been fired at Saudi Arabia. Allied ground forces are said to be moving rapidly northward on at least four fronts. Now, this comes uh, from Arab sources and from British sources. Some units plunging up to 18 miles into Kuwait, other units uh, going into southern Iraq. All of this within the first two hours of the offensive that was launched about five hours ago. These reports come from Saudi and British sources. The Pentagon, uh, under its new rules, refuses to comment. As the attack began, uh, the Kuwaiti news agency reported that the small island that was referred to other, uh, earlier near Kuwait City was captured with the surrender of some 500 to 1,000 Iraqi soldiers. The UN Security Council met briefly late last night, but the meeting broke up after 20 minutes. Delegates saying ceasefire efforts were being abandoned. Now, numbers can tell a story. They can mean something. We're talking about, uh, we mentioned there, the report that as the Marines uh, invaded with an amphibious assault, that island uh, that controls the access to Kuwait City, that they took 500 to 1,000 prisoners. The number of prisoners taken early in this ground war will give us a good indication of how tough or how easy the task of liberating Kuwait is going to be. The early indications are that a lot of prisoners are being taken. Now, joining us now is Lieutenant Colonel uh, Ronan Grissom being with us. What do you know about what's going Thank on you. inside the offensive? Well, uh, we know as much as you do, or perhaps even a little less. Of course, uh, we keep abreast of the development. Uh, all I can say right now is that uh, we congratulate Allied forces uh, for taking uh, this move at this stage. And we hope that they prosecute this uh, phase of the war as successfully as they have done the first phase of the air operations. 
Colonel, you have so much combat course, uh, experience. What should we look for in the coming hours and days? What will be the telltale signs of how the battle is going? Well, uh, I would say that uh, I would be very cautious in trying to draw conclusions from past uh, battle, past combat, to what is happening uh, right now in the Gulf. This is a different war, different technology, uh, superior air power, uh, which is in full control, uh, devastating artillery power of Allied forces. So it would be very uh, premature uh, to give now an assessment. What I do believe is that uh, U.S. and Allied forces will be able to use all those advantages in order to shorten the war, to minimize casualties, and avoid the direct contact which was so evident in past wars in the Korea and World War II. And I'm sure all these elements were taken into consideration when this ground offensive was planned. What about your own forces? Uh, what are they doing as this Allied ground attack grinds into Kuwait and southern Iraq? Well, uh, what I can say about Israel in general, that we woke uh, up to another morning of what we call an emergency routine. And after consultation, which were taking place uh, in the defense ministry throughout the night, we decided uh, still to resume normal life in Israel today. And uh, all the schools were open. People went back to work. Uh, of course, our forces are in a high state of alert and readiness to meet any new developing contingencies. But as of now, we don't see any uh, increase in the threat dimensions that we pay face for the past 38 days of this campaign. So we will, uh, as you say, uh, roll with the punches and continue with our emergency routine. And of course, if there are new developments uh, and new threats emerging, uh, we'll be prepared to meet them. Colonel, thanks for being with us. Good luck. Thank you. Our CBS Thank you. News coverage of the uh, ground offensive here in and around the Persian Gulf continues. War was made here just three hours ago. Regrettably, the noon deadline passed without the agreement of the government of Iraq to meet demands of United Nations Security Council Resolution 660 as set forth in the specific terms spelled out by the coalition to withdraw unconditionally from Kuwait. To the contrary, what we have seen is a redoubling of Saddam Hussein's efforts to destroy completely Kuwait and its people. I have therefore directed General Norman Schwarzkopf in conjunction with coalition forces to use all forces available, including ground forces, to eject the Iraqi army from Kuwait. Once again, this was a decision made only after extensive consultations within our coalition partnership. White House officials have given CNN some more of the background on how this decision was made. Officials tell us that Soviet President Gorbachev asked President Bush to give the Soviet peace plan another 48 hours to work, but that the president told Mr. Gorbachev that would not be possible. Then the president telephoned many members of the coalition to let them know what was up and that it was up for this weekend, and he gave the start time to the leaders of the House and Senate in this country. The president decided to announce the noon Saturday deadline after the, uh, the time for the start of the ground war was, uh, was firm with General Schwarzkopf. CNN was told several days ago by a senior administration official about how the ground war would be conducted. Some of the things we were told, that the 17,000 Marines in the region would move toward the coast of Kuwait, either as an actual assault on, uh, on some Kuwaiti land or as a feint. It turns out, and we've received a report from a, a Kuwaiti government in exile official, that the Marines in fact have now taken an island that's important, it's the island of Falaika. The coalition airplanes, we were told, would double the number of sorties they were flying in the Kuwaiti theater of operation to perhaps as many as 1,800. Both the battleships, the Missouri and the Wisconsin, would be firing their 16-inch guns at strategic targets um, that are targets which Iraq has controlled and which uh, would certainly be shaken up by that gunfire. And armored troops would move across Kuwait's southern border with Saudi Arabia, but that the main movement of, uh, of soldiers would come from some other direction. John Holloman, CNN, live at the White House.
John, thanks very much for that. The ground war for Kuwait, the biggest battle since World War II, is underway. Our special coverage continues. An enormous battle this is. What are there, 2,000 tanks, I suppose, along there? I would say just in this group alone, there's about 2,000 tanks moving. Uh, and there's another oh, 1,400 or so down in here. Now, uh, moving with the tanks are also armored personnel carriers, infantry is there. Uh, engineer units, uh, we've seen graphics of these uh, so-called scissor bridges. Uh, talk about how that works. Or the, uh, how does that work as they move along there? Well, I suspect, Bob, at this point in time, you're seeing tanks and mechanized infantry moving out to clear the way. I don't think the big armored formations have quite cracked loose yet. When those guys go, they're going to roar north somewhere up in here. So this is the operation to clear the way get the units in front out of the way and those are probably mechanized which have uh, tanks with them and soldiers riding in those armored personnel carriers those bradleys that you see getting getting the things opened up just a just a layman's question iraq and kuwait across a wide front british armors believed to be well to the west of kuwait with french and american units sweeping through iraq to attack the republican guard forces dug in southwest of basra this morning french sources reported them 40 miles inside iraq heading for the euphrates the oil town of Wafra was an early Allied goal. Troops, including Kuwaitis, are reported to have reached Jahra, 20 miles west of Kuwait City, possibly by helicopter. If true, this could cut off Kuwait City from Iraqi reinforcements. U.S. Marines are reported to have captured the island of Falaka, a vital move if further marine landings on the coast of Kuwait are to take place. Iraq's defensive line seems to have been breached in several places. For days, fuel air bombs have been dropped on minefields. The huge downward blast detonates mines buried in the sand. Before the offensive began, napalm was dropped on the trenches filled with oil to set them alight before the Iraqis could use them as a defence. In London, exiled Kuwaitis who don't wish to be identified claim inside information as to how the war is going. Tomorrow is 25th of February, it's the Independence Day of Kuwait. And we're hoping by tonight Kuwait is liberated so we have a joyous uh, Independence Day tomorrow. Is that a hope or is that a belief based on the information that you're getting? Well, we, we are close to that. I think we, we feel confidence that um, uh, it's not something that is uh, unachievable. It looks that um, it's going to go, it's going well. Reports from Saudi Arabia say Iraqi soldiers are surrendering in their thousands. If true, it will help ensure the war is as short and sharp as the Allied commanders have planned. The Kuwaiti news agency says Allied troops recaptured Kuwait City within hours after the ground war began, but that report cannot be confirmed. And U.S. military officials will say only that the coalition met its first day objectives. CNN's Mike Shinoy joins us live from Saudi Arabia now with Kuwaiti reaction to the Gulf developments. First, a quick update. There are a lot of reports floating around. Very few of them can be confirmed. Basically, Allied Commander General Norman Schwarzkopf has told us that things are going remarkably well. Lots of Iraqi prisoners, lots of Allied progress. There are unconfirmed, and I repeat, unconfirmed reports about the Allies reaching the outskirts of Kuwait City, but we have no way to confirm that. With me now is Ambassador Abdullah Bishara, a Kuwaiti diplomat who for the last decade or so has been the secretary general of the gulf cooperation council that's an organization of six gulf states dealing with regional issues ambassador let me ask you first of all do you have any information from kuwaiti sources you yourself are a kuwaiti about what may be going on inside kuwait at this time i have two things one is jubilation by the kuwaitis inside kuwait the day of emancipation has dawned on them second a terrifying reign of terror the Iraqi unleashed. Unfortunately, Iraqi soldiers there, with the breakdown of law and order, started to unleash a campaign of terror against our kith and kin. Uh, be on the military side, I knew that the Kuwaitis are, are, are close to the outskirts of the sec second city in Kuwait called Jahra. Now, I'm not sure about the, uh, the, the allies are very close to the city of Kuwait. We, the Kuwaitis, pray that the allies will not suffer as many casualties as one would uh, 
imagine in such a um, campaign of such a magnitude. Let me ask you about the goals of the war. Do you see any way in which your country or the other Gulf countries can have a secure future if Saddam Hussein remains?